on this edition of Jewish Voice, an urgent message on our growing economic problems. When it comes to money, a debt-based fiat paper system creates unrighteous wealth that's here today and gone tomorrow. and welcome to this edition of Jewish Voice. I'm your host, Jonathan Burnus. Well, the price for gasoline, food, and just about everything for that matter are all on the rise. Economists and government leaders are trying to figure out what to do to deal with our runaway debt and faltering economy. So what lies ahead? Will things get better, as our president is promising, or are the economic woes Bible prophecy may have predicted thousands of years ago now looming on the horizon? In just a few minutes, economic expert Norm Franz is here to answer those questions and help us to understand what this all means. And if economic downturns and even economic collapses ahead, what can you do to prepare for it? Then later in the program, I'm going to continue my teaching on how you can experience the breakthrough that you need for your life, especially during the greatest trials and most difficult seasons of your life in my series, Jacob Becomes Israel. First, though, I want you to meet an Ethiopian woman and her daughter from the city of Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. They, along with their other children, have no home. They live on the streets, struggling to survive day by day but life changed for them when they wandered into our Jewish Voice medical outreach. Take a look. This beautiful mother and daughter are homeless. Uh, the mother begs money uh, to survive, just to provide food for family. You can see their clothes are worn out, the shoes are worn out. Her 14-year-old her daughter is, is, came barefoot with uh, abdominal pain, and we're able to give them free of charge medical care and medicines. Uh, they're gonna make them feel much better. Uh, I asked them if they have a home. They said no, they live outside uh, and sleep on the church grounds outside the church. And we're going to give them not only the medicines that they need to help them, but these beautiful blankets that one of our donors hand sewed for people just like this mother and daughter. Aren't they beautiful? The heart with the Star of David. We're going to give you these. These are from Yeshua. The Lord's giving you these as a blessing because he wants you to know that he, he loves you both so much. God bless you both. And thank you uh, for making it possible for us to help uh, needy Jewish people like this, not only with medicines and eye care and dental care, but with just very practical things like blankets. And it's cold at night here, and now they're gonna be able to sleep a little warmer. A medical checkup. A simple prescription, eyeglasses, a warm blanket. You know, these things may be taken for granted where we live, but they are precious to these impoverished Jewish people living in Ethiopia. Would you like to help serve the Jews of the Beta Israel tribe living in Ethiopia? Well, you can by coming on one of our overseas outreaches to the Jewish people. We need your help. You don't have to be a surgeon or a dentist. You don't even have to be a nurse. All you have to do is be willing to love, pray, and serve for a week to 10 days overseas. I promise you this, if you join us on a Jewish Voice Outreach, you will be blessed even more than the people that you help. If God is tugging on your heart, I want you to call or you can email or log on to our website today to find out more. Well, Norm Franz is a recognized authority on the problems facing the world's financial system. He has studied how the Bible and its prophetic predictions are coming to pass in these crucial days and times. Recently, I spoke to him about how we as believers can prepare for the likelihood of economic hardship and actually prosper in the midst of crisis. Norm, contrary to the rhetoric, you use the word babble, which I babble. think is, is, is very appropriate that we're hearing from our government we are not seeing 
a recovery, an economic recovery. This is going to collapse. Talk about why. Exactly. Um, uh, the reason it's going to collapse is because it's built on a system of dishonest weights and measures in our monetary system. It uses, um, uh, in ancient times, that system would debauch the currency using a dross metal, where they would put a lighter, cheaper metal into the silver. Today, that same principle is in our monetary system, only the, the dross is not a metal, the dross is debt. And that has created the global debt bubble that is in the process of, of collapsing right now, pretty much all the way around the world. And, and, and that has even knocked on the door of the United States. And just as Greece, for example, is at 100% debt to GDP, uh, the United States is currently at about 80, 75 to 80 percent debt to GDP, annual GDP, and we're headed, we're headed towards 100 and more. And in the end, because again, we have to understand that when you transgress God's laws, God's righteous ways of doing things, the, the inevitability is that a curse comes back on whatever it is, and that curse ends up being a judgment. So that's what's going on. And it's not another cycle. We're not going to go through another cycle. This is the end of this system because the globalists in this around the world want to bring us into a new world order, which will actually be the fulfillment uh, of what the Book of Revelation calls the mystery of Babylon. I, I want to go. It, I want to talk more about that. How how do we become like the sons of Issachar, men who understood the times? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to come back to God in all of his ways. We cannot pick and choose. It's not a cafeteria plan. Um, he has a cafeteria, and you have to, you have to, you have to walk uh, in all of it. And one of those things is that we, we need to start understanding what righteous wealth is because righteous wealth is an enduring wealth. And when it comes to money, a debt-based fiat paper system creates unrighteous wealth that's here today and gone tomorrow. And one of the ways that you can help to protect yourself from that is start putting some of your wealth into the only God-ordained biblical monetary system that there is that's built on honest weights and measures, and that's your gold and your silver. And simply put, we don't, we don't put our money in gold and silver to try and make money or become rich. Well, all we're doing is we're taking some of our wealth that we have in paper cash and we're moving it over into, a, into the precious metals uh, that is an honest weight and measure that's outside that collapsing debt-based paper system. That's, that's, the, that's the one thing now, Norm, that we need to do. Th there's other things. You, you, in the last, after the last program, you said it's a shame we only talked about precious metals yeah. because there's more. Touch on that, and then I want to go into Bible prophecy. Okay. You actually brought a coin that I want you to, to show everybody, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Um, well, um, in the book of Revelation, when it talks about the third horseman, that third horseman has a scale. And scales always refer to the monetary system. And that monetary system creates a situation where a quart of wheat costs a day's wages. A quart of wheat is 2,000 calories, represents basically the sustenance that a person needs on a daily basis. And what that passage of scripture is saying is it's saying that the monetary system of that day creates an economic environment where there's pressure on wages in the economy and a rise in prices so that, so that people have to work all day, every day just to meet their needs. Don't raise your hands out there. And, and the bottom line is this, is that that's been going on in third world countries. You go to Ethiopia all the time, and in Ethiopia, it's just you, over there, people just spend most of the day just trying to make ends meet. From, from, from hour to hour, they're just looking for sustenance. To live on rice. Exactly. And, 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 and now that, is, that has come to the West now because the debt bubble is popping and the governments and the central banks around the world, all they can do is continue to borrow and print money to try and inflate their way out. And that has never worked from the Weimar Republic to, to today as we talk. Uh, that has never worked and it will never work because it transgresses God's law. Talk, talk a little bit about Malachi. Uh, it talks about where the Lord, you talk about this, the Lord will open the windows of heaven mm -hmm. and pour out a blessing. How do you understand that? Well, when you, when you read all of Malachi, uh, first, uh, first two chapters, it's talking about the priesthood and how they were, how they were messing with God's offering in, mm -hmm. in more, more ways than one. And, and when God says, I'm going to send my messenger, my Malachi, um, which is Malachi's name, of Malachi's name, 
Um, he says that um, he's going to come as a, that, that, that messenger of the covenant's going to come and he's going to be like a refiner's fire. And he's going he's gonna to refine the sons of Levi. He's talking about the priesthood so that they might receive offerings in righteousness. And see, God is bringing us back to righteousness in everything from our offerings to how we handle our finances to what we even have our money in or our wealth in. Um, um, one of the things that we need to have uh, our funds in is that we need, to, we need to have it in. I believe we need to have some food on hand. I believe that, you know, here's the bottom line. If you knew something was going up in, up in price, you'd probably want to get some now. And, and it's very, very clear in the scriptures as well as what's going on in the economy right now that food prices are going to go up. So we encourage people to, to, to buy some foods for no other reason than to get it while it's still cheap and have get it some while, on Get hand. it while it's hot. Get it while it's uh, hot. You go into that in your book, Money and Wealth in the New Millennium. Yes. Uh, Talk about how this all ties into biblical prophecy. And I want people to see this coin you brought. Explain. We're going to show it on the screen now. Explain what they're looking at. Okay. Well, the thing, um, uh, what you have is you have a situation where in the scriptures, and, and Bible, prophecy been teaching, Bible prophecy teachers have been teaching about this forever, is that we're in the last days and and so what's going to happen is we're coming into this North one, American. Yeah, the North American, um, it's, a, it's an Amero. Um, it's a, now, it's not an official coin. This is a proposed prototype currency uh, made by Daniel Carr. But the spirit behind it is, understands that the U.S. dollar is at some point in time going to collapse. That's the world's reserve currency. And, and the spirit of, and the God of this world who controls and runs this world order of things. I mean, you have to understand that the world's financial system was not built by God or designed by God because if it had been, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be rich one moment and poor the next. That's unrighteous wealth. God's biblical wealth, righteous wealth, is an enduring wealth that cannot be shaken. Amen. And that's so right. that's what we've got to get back to. It's, it's, and it's more than just precious metals. It's, it's a lifestyle but when, but when we're, coming, we're coming back to this whole thing in prophecy is that in order for there to be a, quote, new world order, which the, which the book of Revelation talks about a beast system and so on and so forth, we must understand that this new world order that all these globalists are talking about is going to be the fulfillment of that. And to get to a one world currency, your current world currency, which is your U.S. dollar, that's the, that's the reserve currency of the world, if it's working, you won't need a new currency. But if it's not, you do. And that's why you're going to have crises because out of crises comes a new order, that new In world Norm, order. You, you, this is being architect, yes, architected absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. by uh, people like George Soros, but really by the enemy, of yes. course. And, yeah. and the Bible's clear about this. But do you see our current administration heading us in this direction um, all, purposely? All governments are part of that beast system. Um, even the conservative right, we must understand, and I try to tell people, you know, that Jesus was not a Republican. He was a Torah observant high priest Jew. And if you want to see conservatism, that is biblical conservatism. The conservatism we have today is, is a secular uh, uh, U.S. constitutional conservatism but it is not biblical conservatism. So everybody's a progressive and everybody in the end is moving toward a new world order. Some are just going, the left is going 50 or 100 miles an hour and the right's just going 50. <laughs> Norm, we just have a couple minutes left. Uh, give us some final uh, uh, scriptural wisdom and, and some good news because there is good news out of all this. Absolutely. Um, we encourage you to just uh, stormproof your house. Um, uh, in fact, in, in the book and even in the uh, um, Prepare for More Financial Crisis, we give some specific things in there um, and, and, uh, about, about how to come out and how to kind of insulate yourself from the world system. The, the, the bottom line is we need to understand what Babylon is. And once we understand what it is, it's easy to come out because you're like, we were raised in Babylon, and so what happens is, is that we just go Babylon's way. We don't realize it until we read the scriptures. And everything that's being orchestrated, the plans of the enemy, et cetera, et cetera, are all in the scriptures. And what, and what the book Money and Wealth does pulls them out, and it says, okay, here's what God's Word says. Here's where it's manifesting in the world today. Here's what you need to do, and that's, and that's come out of the system. And there's even the Ten Commandments of, 
of a biblical prosperity in there and I mean just everything. Praise God. Well, the book is Money and Wealth in the New Millennium. We're going to make it available to you on Jewish Voice, a prophetic guide to the new world economic order. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Norm, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, John. Norm Franz, everyone. Friends, I urge you to become like the sons of Issachar and understand the times that we're living in. These days are not business as usual. If you're ready to get serious about getting out of debt and getting your finances on solid ground, you need to pay close attention to this next message. Out of control federal spending and a troubled financial sector are about to trigger an even bigger economic crisis that could lead to greater unemployment, deeper recession, devalued real estate and foreclosures, and record-setting bankruptcies. Economic expert and biblical futurist Norm Franz has released a powerhouse biblical expose on our global economic problems in these last days and God's plan of deliverance. Will you be prepared? Call now or give a gift of $40 or more on our website to help Jewish Voice continue to proclaim Yeshua to Jewish people worldwide. And we'll rush you money and wealth in the new millennium, a prophetic guide to the new world economic order. Inside its pages, you will discover why our government cannot save us from the debt disaster, how you can get out of debt now, the Ten Commandments of Biblical Prosperity. You'll also receive Jonathan Vernis's new teaching, Jacob Becomes Israel. Taken from the pages of Genesis, learn how to pray through and hold fast to the Lord and His promises until they come to pass in your life. Your gift of $40 or more will help Jewish Voice provide medical care and the good news of Yeshua to at least three suffering Jewish people in places like Ethiopia and India, nations where Jewish people suffer poverty, sickness, and persecution in silence, longing for someone to care. You can bring the healing and hope of the Lord into their lives and introduce them to Yeshua, their Messiah. Please give generously to help save lives. Then join Norm Franz and Jonathan Burness in following the wisdom of Proverbs that reminds us, a prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but a simple man keeps going and suffers for it. I encourage each and every one of you to act now. Go to your phone and call with a gift as the Lord leads you. You know, your gift will help us heal the lives and souls of abandoned Jewish people that are living in crushing poverty in the forgotten corners of Ethiopia or India. As our thanks, I want to send you two important resources. First, my new teaching series, Jacob Becomes Israel. It's going to help you to learn how to pray through and persevere just as Jacob did in his darkest hour. And listen, like him, you'll possess the promises of God for your life and you will be victorious. I also want to send you the book by Norm Franz called Money and Wealth in the New Millennium, A Prophetic Guide to the New World Economic Order. This honest, no punches pulled information is going to help you to take steps to avoid the greater economic shaking that's likely coming in everything from real estate to investments and savings. Friends, you need to hear what Norm Franz is saying now, not later. Now, no matter what you can do, call now or visit our website and give the most generous gift you can. I know the Lord will bless you in accordance with His promise in Genesis 12, 3, to bless those who bless the descendants of Abraham. And that is exactly what you'll be doing by calling today. Now let's learn about how to make it through the greatest challenges and trials of life by grabbing hold of God as I continue my teaching series entitled, Jacob Becomes Israel. When I became a believer, uh, I had no intention when I prayed the prayer of salvation to give up everything that I was enjoying. God had to do that in my life. So I prayed a prayer really to appease the Bible study teacher that was pushing me. What happens after you die? If you leave this this Bible study and get hit by a car, what happens? And so I felt so much pressure. I prayed with him. And and what happened was that God had other plans for me because I wanted to go on my way and forget this. But something had changed in my life. My head hadn't connected to the prayer, but my heart had connected. We need to learn to pray through. You know, we, we, we pray a prayer, we throw up a prayer, uh, same way we, we, we 
drive through the, the fast food restaurant and we expect that that's all we need to do and God's going to listen and if he doesn't, it's his fault. No, it's our fault. Jacob understood that in this place of desperation, he wasn't going to let go. He wrestled all night and some of you who need deliverance, some of you who need God's divine provision, some of you who need restoration of family, you, you may have had a spouse walk out on you. You need to pray through. You need to believe God through. So keep going. Keep pressing on. Don't give up. Amen. So now he wrestled alone, number one. Number two, he wrestled all night. Three, he wrestled all out. Look what verse 25 says, and we'll put it up on the screen for you. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Think of the pain that he experienced. So he wrestled all night. He wrestled alone, but he wrestled all out. He wrestled in the midst of the pain. You may feel like you're in pain as you're watching this program. It's so painful. No one understands me. No one cares. But I want to encourage you. God cares. You're not the first one that's walked through pain. And we need to, to realign ourselves with what the Word of God teaches. Does the Bible say that when we accept Jesus, the pain will all go away? That there'll be no trials, no tribulations? Quite the contrary. Jesus said that if you follow me, I suffered, you'll suffer even more. I was persecuted, you'll be persecuted even more. The price you pay will be great. But I'm not going to remove those circumstances for you. I'm going to be with you in the midst of those circumstances. You know, I'm not going to take them from you, but I'm going to give you victory as you walk through them. And there is a price to pay when you decide to walk with God and want to be used by him. One person said it this way, salvation is free, but the rest is a la carte. You pay as you grow. I want to promise you this. You will suffer rejection. You know, this might go contrary to the teach faith teaching as you've been hearing before and after this program, but I'm, I'm telling you, the Word of God says you will suffer rejection. The Word of God says you will be required to give up things. You'll be required to give up dreams. You'll be required to give up ambitions and desires because it isn't about what you want. It's about what He wants. You know, the, this idea of prosperity that God will cater to our every need and will never have another problem is absolutely absurd. It's unscriptural, and friends, it's dangerous. It's certainly not the gospel. Yeshua said, they rejected me, they'll reject you. And you need to embrace the sufferings with him. As Paul said, not only that I might know the power of his resurrection, but the fellowship of, of his sufferings. And I'll tell you, there's fellowship in his sufferings. When we're suffering, when we're going through trials and tribulations, that's the place we can most identify with Yeshua and what he endured for us. And it's life transforming the fellowship of his sufferings. And you decide. You can complain. You can be bitter. You can be uh, uh, continually blaming other people. Or you can embrace the trial and the tribulation and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And even if they throw me in the fiery furnace, I will continue to worship him. The, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they weren't delivered from the fiery furnace. In other words, they had to go through the furnace. But in the midst of the furnace, they worshiped the Lord. And there was a fourth one that joined, joined them. And I believe it was Yeshua. So we need to press on through the pain and move forward. Jacob fights through the pain. His hips been pulled out of joint. And he still doesn't let go of God. Whatever you're going through, God knows. And he knows the limit that you can take. And he's looking for you to reach out to him, to magnify him. And I promise you the problems will decrease, decrease, decrease as you magnify and focus on him. Let's look at one more thing in verse 26. So he's wrestled all out. He's wrestled all night. He's wrestled alone. And then we're told in verse 26 that the man said, let go for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Let me say that again. I will not let you go until you bless me. I'm going to hang on because you're the only hope that I have. You're the only solution to the problem. You know what happened when blind Bartimaeus shouted to the Lord for healing? Jesus, Jesus, I'm over here. They told him to be quiet. Shut up. 
Opposition. This is the opposition. Whenever you seek to follow God, whenever you turn your heart to live for Him, there'll always be opposition. Expect that opposition. But you know what he did? Instead of listening to the crowd saying, shut up, he's cried out all the louder. He increased the intensity of his outcry to the Lord. And that's what we need to do. The woman with the issue of blood, it says that she was, she was weak. 14 years she had suffered this ailment. Been to many doctors, no solutions. And they, they tried to push her away. But you know what the Bible says? She was so resolute. She was so determined that she pressed through the crowd because she knew that if she could just touch the talus, the hem of his garment, she would be healed. I love that story. I love the story of blind Bartimaeus, and I love the story of Jacob because he persevered on and said, I will not let go until I receive what I need from God. You, like Jacob, can experience a life-transforming breakthrough by grabbing hold of God and not letting go. Just remember, nothing is impossible for God. No problem is too big or too small. And He can give you hope when things seem hopeless. So please, don't give up if you're going through a difficult trial. Even if things seem hopeless, they aren't, not with God. Well, I hope you'll call or write me now so I can send you my DVD teaching Jacob becomes Israel. Like Jacob, you can hold fast to God and pray through until the breakthrough comes. And like Jacob, you will be an overcomer if you don't give up. I also want to send you Money in the New Millennium, a prophetic guide to the New World Economic Order by Norm Franz. This is an economic warning, but it's also filled with biblical wisdom and advice to help prepare and protect you during financial crisis. You can't afford to be without this information. You know, these are tools that I want to sow into your life as you partner with us to expand our outreach to the Jewish people that are living without hope in need of their breakthrough. So whatever you can do, every gift counts. And thank you for helping us to reach the Jewish people even in the uttermost part of the world with the good news of their Messiah. Also, you can now join us as a friend on Facebook. Just search us the next time that you visit your Facebook account and click on the like button. You'll enjoy all the additional uh, features and content we have for you there, along with the many wonderful friends that you'll meet. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. So until next time, this is Jonathan Burnus reminding you to pray for the peace of Israel. The Bible says they shall prosper that love thee. Shalom, and God bless you. It's time to proclaim Yeshua to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Join us as a volunteer for our upcoming international festival of Jewish music and dance in Rosario, Argentina, August 19th through the 29th. Come minister with us and see what the Lord can do through you. Call or email us today for complete details and get ready to bless others and be blessed in a big way. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you.